came back almost 17 years ago now, but this keeps popping up on my head lately and I just want to share this. I haven't told many people and it's never spoken about. I was about 14 when I went on holiday with my horrible dad and my wicked stepmother and my two stepsisters. Stepsister 1 and I were 2 months apart in age while the second was around 12. We all went down the road from our hotel to a bar and the rule there was, if you could hold a glass you could drink. We were typical teenagers so it was unusual for us to be allowed a few. Anyway, my horrible dad and my wicked stepmother decided that it was time to call it a night. My stepsisters and I were having such a good time and we felt really grown up and didn't want to retire for the night. We struck a deal with our parents that we could stay until 11 and then come straight back to the hotel and meet our parents in the hotel bar where they would wait for our safe return. Now we felt extra grown up. We had fun and it was getting late so we decided to make a short walk back to the hotel. We didn't want to be late and if we did as we were told we might be allowed to do it again. We were walking back all together. The hotel was on top of a steep, winding hilly road. As we were walking up this road, a car drove past and continued up the hill. Nothing to worry about. It was just a car. However, a red flag went up when it came back down the hill quite slowly. Again, maybe they were lost, but we got a bit more of a brisk walk on. The same car was then driving up behind us slowly. I felt really uneasy at this point and I shouted run. By the time that I had shouted this they were right by our side. I shouted at one of my stepsisters, the younger of the two, to run back to get the parents. They had grabbed my first stepsister and they had tried dragging her in the car. I ran back down to the car screaming. I grabbed a hold of her and we had a tug of war with her. I kicked the man in the shin and he let her go. At this point, we started to run and our parents had started to run towards us, when the car sped away. I'm not sure what would have happened if they were successful. This happened probably 13 years ago when I was about 15. It was Saturday and my sister, who was 14 at the time, were the only ones at the house. I remember hanging out in the living room and I look out the front window to see a guy in his tidy whiteies running up to our yard towards our side gate entrance. Freaking out, I ran into my sister's room and told her that there was a crazy naked guy coming up to the house. She thought that I was joking until this guy started banging on the window. We screamed and ran to check if the back door was locked and we grabbed a few kitchen knives. At this point, he was banging on all the windows and trying to get inside while also yelling, Dwayne, Dwayne, let me in. We then hid in my grandma's room. I don't know why I didn't call the cops, but I ended up calling my mom who was out running errands with my grandma. I told her what was going on and my mom said that she would call my uncle who lived right the next street over. About three minutes later, I see my uncle running up to the house and pull him to the front yard. I was so scared because I thought they were going to start fighting. Interesting enough though, he leaves. Like he calmly walked away in his underwear. It turns out the guy was someone that my uncle knew since they were kids. Apparently he was a problem child and grew up to be a shady person. He would always get into trouble and was possibly using drugs so my uncle had distanced himself from him. Anyways, the terrifying part of the story is that this guy got arrested later that same month and was convicted of robbery and first degree murder. The day that he ran up to my house he had just killed a local drug dealer and he had stashed the body in a dumpster behind a church and not too far away. He then took his clothes off and ran to my house thinking that my uncle still lived there. My uncle told my mom and grandma that on the lawn he was begging him to drive him to the hospital and even pulled out a huge wad of cash, but my uncle told him to get lost before he had called the cops. Looking back, I was a few feet away from a murderer who tried to get inside my house. I hate to think what would have happened if he was successful. This 
The story happened seven years ago, but it feels like it was only yesterday. I was a patient tech at a dialysis clinic in rural Alabama and up way too early to open the clinic. The first thing I saw after shutting off my alarm at 2.45 a.m. was a message from my cousin Taylor, who lived in Colorado, saying, You're going to see the news about a shooting in Colorado, but we're safe, don't worry. Naturally, I flip on the TV, soaking up the horror while throwing on my scrubs and getting angry at mankind. A great start to a Friday, I must say. I pull up to my clinic and notice that the nurse that opens with me isn't there yet. No biggie because I'm a little early. So I grab my bag and I head in to get started. I finish up my prep work in the water room and I go out on the treatment floor. No nurse still. The clinical manager walks in about that time and says, Where's Nurse Nancy? To which I replied, I have no idea, but I'll call her. After trying her house and cell without getting an answer, I was getting a little peeved. This particular nurse was picking up night shifts at the nursing home and had a bad habit of oversleeping. My CM says, Well, why don't you drive by her place? It was only a street over from the clinic, and check if she's even there. Now, before anyone says, uh, why didn't she go, let me explain something. It was almost time for the patients to come in, but a nurse has to be in the building in order to even let them in the lobby. My CM was a nurse and could at least let everyone in while we figured out what Nurse Nancy's deal was. Anywho, I agreed to ride by because it's literally a stone's throw away, and because if I saw her car was there... I was going to lay on the horn until she got up. I pull up to her house and she's there so I deploy my I'm honking mad tactic while she pokes her head out of the door apologizing and swearing that she'll be at the clinic in five minutes. Cool with me so I head back to the clinic, park in the still empty parking lot and start to get out of my car. In the time that it took me to open my door, stand up and turn around. There is a guy right inside my door blocking my way going, where's your bag? Now I'm so confused. I thought that he was a patient spouse, son, friend initially, and I say, it's inside, why? I started to move forward and realized that there is a knife poking me in the chest. Was this really happening? And we never have to worry about thieves or druggies because our clinic has a no narcotics and Nothing to steal unless you're really into crappy 10-inch TVs that might or might not have been puked or blood on. I know, only a second or two went by, but it felt like eons. I remembered that my ears started ringing, and my dad's voice saying that, if you get cornered by someone, scream obscenities to shock them. I don't know, he was probably being sarcastic, and then hit him as hard as you can in the run. My chest felt like it was on fire. I mean, why me and why today? Why'd that guy have to do what he did? I mean, what's wrong with people? The next thing I know, I'm screaming, Get away! And I slammed my right hand up under his knife while swinging a wild uppercut with my left fist. Pow, right in the kisser. He drops the knife and immediately starts backpedaling. I'm yelling after him and he's grabbing his face while breaking into a run. I watch him dash out the back of the lot and it hits me. Adrenaline rushes over and I'm beating on the clinic door because my hands are shaking too bad to get my key in the lock. The CM lets me in and right before the door shuts, I see nurse freaking Nancy pull up. I'm kind of yelling about what happened and my ears are still ringing and the CM is freaking out and calling 911. And then I look at my hands and my right palm was cut and the three knuckles on my left are split. Nurse Nancy is inside now and I'm trying not to throttle her. I know that it wasn't exactly her fault, but I'm just going to blame it on the nerves. The cops show up and get the run down and insist on taking me to the ER because I might need stitches and I'm not hysterical so they think I'm in shock. I didn't need sutures, just some liquid and medical super glue, but I had to get a tetanus shot because, to quote the doc, the human mouth is a place for bacteria and filth. Now, for some actual uplifting information. 
I had given a pretty decent description of the Juden because I had landed a decent blow to the face. The officers thought it wouldn't be hard to find him. Guess what? They didn't have to look. An officer was sitting in the parking lot of the clinic when he sees a guy, matching the description, walking through looking under cars. The cop is not in an unmarked squad car and things. Surely no one can be that dumb. But lo and behold, he gets closer, and the guy had a busted upper lip. Apparently, this guy was trying to find the knife that he had dropped and maybe a Darwin Award. My officer friendly brings him in for questioning. It turns out this upstanding fellow has been in and out of prison quite a bit, and he admits to everything and pleads guilty. He was given a heavy sentence because of this lengthy criminal history and, you know, his poorly attempted armed robbery. I don't remember when he'll get out, but I'm fairly certain that we won't be seeing each other again. As you may already know, Venezuela is a country that is deep in corruption and bad government policies that spread to its public servants and forces. As a citizen, I'm afraid of the police. The same ones that must protect us by oath. And the particular reason for it is that they are either common criminals in uniform or people that had good intentions when joining the force but Due to the country's problems, have chosen to blackmail people into submission for spare cash, even going as far as kidnapping you with the excuse of arresting you for any little thing, to make your relatives pay them the bail. That is exactly what happened to me and my now ex-girlfriend. My ex-girlfriend and I were studying law at the moment and had various classes together. One particular day, she didn't show up for any of the classes and... I got worried so I called her repeatedly and nothing. I got even more worried so I called her mother and she told me that she did know as well and had been being worried too. Knowing that she drives alone in a car when going to the university, I thought immediately that she had had an accident and I panicked so I took my car and drove it in the route that she always takes when going to the university and there was nothing, no sign of her or her car. I decided to call a very good friend of mine and a professor on forensic investigations to ask for help and to try to find her. Thirteen hours had passed with no one knowing about her. He agreed in order to send a search alert on her. He had the contacts and the power to do so. While we sound the area she could be on. After four more hours and the search going on and on, her mother calls me panicked to the bone and crying loudly, telling me that her daughter had been kidnapped and they were demanding four million bolivars at the time that had to be around like six thousand dollars, which was incredibly expensive and the money was just not there. Hearing this I crack and get incredibly angry, but I tried my very best to be calmed, so I asked her if she was given any special instructions to follow, in which she replied that, the transaction had to be made by one person that is related to her alone and their whereabouts within 24 hours and of course and not telling the cops. And like I had the call on speaker, the professor listened and told us that this had to be planned in the CICPC. It's like the FBI or any other country's equivalent. So we all went to the central and we gathered there. Her whole family, the agents, the professor and I we handed the options to the table and concluded that the best way to even have a chance of getting her back was by actually paying the requested amount and to attack the compound shortly after to get it back and jailing the criminals. A relative or a friend had to go over there by the request, so I offered because apart from being his boyfriend, I was part of a forensic program and I had Navy training so I was in theory capable of handling that type of scenario. The money was gathered up by the family, but they put some of their savings in and I put mine, and the central gave us some as well, that they all transferred to my account. We contacted the thugs through my phone and I speak and set the deal. They made her speak to me for 15 seconds to prove that she was there and alive. The place of the reunion was a ranch located out of the city in a nearby town. I went in my car while followed by the agents that were at least 200 meters away from me at all times in particular vehicles. 
Before I arrive to the ranch, a man stands before me on the road, telling me to stop. He goes by my window and pulls a weapon out and tells me to step out of it, and pulls me in the back seat. After that, two more men came in and drove the car to the ranch while I was being pointed with two guns at my head. They were effectively the kidnappers and told me that this minor kidnap of me was a little cautious move to prevent anything bad from happening. When we get to the ranch and the first thing I see when I step in is my ex being pushed to the front and getting several guns pointed at her. I remain calm and pull my phone out to make the deposit. They deliver to me the accounts and I proceed to do the transfer. While I'm on it, the app can't make any transfers due to connectivity problems. My navigation data wasn't connected, and it wouldn't connect because there was no signal and apparently, they didn't think this through and accused me of trying to buy time for some kind of raid. And without any further discussion, I get hit in the head with a shotgun stock, and I plummet to the floor, followed by several more to the body, including kicks and punches. Now, they had us tied up together and were trying to contact our other relatives to make a second offer. Now, for even more money, within 12 hours or else, we would both be killed. Three hours passed and the door was knocked and the thugs opened it without any concern. And two individuals pass. Two very interesting individuals. Cops. The two men that entered were actual police of the state. That looked at us and said... Hey, how much you asking for them? They talked and after a while, they were gone. After an hour, we hear multiple sirens and men shouting outside of the ranch. The thugs quickly grabbed us and pulled us to another ranch that was connected to the main run, put us in a room and closed a thick metal door. A major shootout was taking place for at least 30 minutes, in which I tried to untie the ropes and I succeeded. I untied both of us and started trying to get out of the room. That was easy enough because the ceiling was made out of a misplaced zinc plate. We climbed over the room and fell into the sewage that directed us to the agent side of the fight. We got with them and they looked surprised at us because we had actually managed to escape and they put us on a patrol car back to the central while the shootout was still taking place. Back at the central, those both of our families surprised and happy to see us back in one piece, and after that, we make our declarations to the agents and told everyone we saw and heard while captive. When I told them about the police officers, they weren't impressed. Actually, no one is impressed by it anymore, and they asked me more specific things about them, which I happily answered. The cops were actually put into custody and were booked for it as well, which is basically, they beat the crap out of them, and they cut the tip of their tongue. And then it was revealed that all the men implied in the kidnapping were police officers on active duty. It was found out because of the investigation of the bodies of some of the kidnappers that also made the tracing of the others who had fled easier. So, the story ends on a happy note after all. Some of the guys are dead, the others were put into jail. They wouldn't have survived because the first thing that prisoners do to cops in jail is take off their you know what's and they screw them with it. I'm not kidding. And a family reunited, a couple back together. We broke up a year after that, but it was okay. Well, and a side note here, this kind of thing happens every single day. And I am not a special person for having been in one. It's almost a cultural thing now. You're not a real Venezuelan if you haven't been kidnapped. And some people, the wealthiest ones, take it as a day-by-day -day thing. They just pay the amount at that moment and that's it. It's more than a robbery than a kidnapping. So, take this as a lesson on how a country's population can be reduced into systematic novel.